Hey, my name's John and Happy New Year. This is uh, Ask John D. Jones and because it's the first show of the year, what I'm gonna do is talk a little bit about um, what I've learned last year, um, some of the things that went well, some of the things which didn't go well and what I've got planned for this upcoming year. So one of the really good things which went well for the site I thought last year, at the beginning of the site, I basically set myself monthly goals of you know how can I improve the site. So some of the things I did at the beginning of the year is updated the theme because it was getting a bit outdated. Again, um, depending if you're um, in a situation like me where you've got like a personal website or you need to do something quickly, what I always recommend is going over to Theme Forest. I bought a theme for like 20 bucks and then just integrated it into my website. The process took me two weeks. Uh, the website looks so much better now than it did. You know, it's very easy to do a website and it's very easy for it to get updated or it to look a bit janky after a period of time. Just going on to Theme Forest, buying a theme and then spending, you know, a couple of days um, just upgrading it using a completely uh, off the shelf theme will make your website wonders. So some of the other things I also did is I created a big backlist back, back of um, tasks that I wanted to look at. So now um, I'm using Markdown a lot on the website. So a lot of the content I'm writing now is actually in Visual Studio and then I um, have a big get repo now of like content. And then after I finished writing, I upload it and put it in Umbreco. Found this um, in terms of content editing for anyone out there who can do the same is just a massive time saver. So now when I'm writing, instead of having to worry about formatting HTML and all that sort of stuff, I can just bang it out in Markdown, copy and paste it into Umbreco. Jobs, uh, jobs are good and really after that. So that was a massive good win. And then towards the end of the year, like a few uh, months ago, I basically spent the whole time upgrading the website to Umbreco 8. Now, as I've talked about in a previous video, um, upgrading to Umbraco for me was a bit of a pain. It took me about three weeks. Um, after I upgraded the website, I lost loads of functionality. There's a few bugs when I launched, but now my code base is a lot smoother and a lot uh, simpler. It's much more easy for me to find things um, and update code. So in general, it was uh, a good thing. Along the way, I've obviously learned a lot of uh, knowledge and now I'm actually working on you know, numerous um, upgrade projects for clients, upgrading them from seven to eight because now I can give them that advice. So that was also really beneficial. Another really uh, positive thing that I tried to do last year, which worked out pretty well, is I released a book on EpiServer development. Now everyone knows that I'm, I'm a big EpiServer fan, I'm an EpiServer EMVP, and you know, when it comes to commercial level CMS systems, I do think EpiServer is one of the best platforms out there. So I've been meaning to write this EpiServer book for about four years, and again, it's always gone a bit wrong. So I started off trying to write the book in Word, and that was just a pain. Then I tried to write the book in Confluence, and again, like doing all the formatting was stupid. So in the end, I basically went to uh, back to basics, and I basically started creating the book in Markdown. And as soon as I started writing all the book in Markdown, life just became so much simpler. So I've been using LeanPub as a publishing platform, and the good thing about LeanPub is you can publish your book, you can say that it's in progress, so it's like 40% complete, 50% complete, and then what I've been doing is that every two weeks I've been working in sprints, and I've been slowly upgrading, updating the content on a two-week basis. And what's actually happened is where I've had this book that I've made very slow progress on over a number of years, what's actually happened is I've made very rapid progress. And the thing which has amazed me, and this is why all of you are absolutely epic, is that people have actually been buying the book. So, so far I've sold about 40 copies, even though it's marked as like 70% complete. And what's been amazing about it is I've been writing the book. Some people have been emailing, going like, there's a load of typos. Um, this bit over here, I don't, I'm really interested in it, but I don't really understand it. And then based on that feedback, I've been able to update the book. So basically now, because I've published early, I'm publishing often, and I'm sort of changing the book based on feedback, I actually feel like now I'm writing a much better book than I was previously. So for me, 2017 was a pretty epic year. Done some amazing things. Uh, went to WrestleMania, that was epic. Uh, got married, don't tell the wife, not so epic. Um, but all in all, it was a good year. So one of the biggest issues and changes for the upcoming year for me is that for contractors who work in England and the government, boo the government, basically they're trying to get as much tax out of people um, as they want 
and they're introducing new laws which massively affect how contracting and the contracting market works. Now, as someone who's been self-employed for like 10, 11 years, one of the problems I've got is that um, I've been working as a contracting and a mix of freelance for a number of years. And what's happening is even though I'm classed as a valid self-employed person, what's happening is all the big companies, so um, you know people like HSBC, um, NatWest, JP Morgan, where I'm currently working as a big clothing um, shop called Duke's net porte What's happening is all these companies are having to make these blank decisions on um, if people are inside IR35, which is this new tax law thing, or outside of it. So what's going to happen for me as of April is potentially I think I'm going to have to move on to like freelancing full time. Now freelancing full time is okay. I make um, a few projects which come in through the website. Life will be really good. And the problem is obviously income's not as easy. When you work for a big company or a big bank, you're just guaranteed money. You can turn in every day. You can say, I want this amount of money. And every day you get paid. As long as you turn up, do a bit of graft, you get paid. Obviously with freelance work, um, for anyone out there thinking about freelance work, freelance work's a bit more tricky. So first you need to go out, you need to spend time looking for clients. When you get clients, sometimes they don't pay you on time. So you've got time like for more admin, you need to chase them. Obviously work might not be consistent. So uh, a common thing um, where people go, I've got this project and then they might actually only give you the work like two or three months later because obviously they're waiting for payment or they're waiting for things to start. So. I mean, going freelance would be very exciting. Um, I don't know if I 100% do it, but that's definitely gonna be a big change. Again, in terms of this website, because um, johndjones.com, I've got another book on the plan. So hopefully, as soon as I can get the EpiServer book done, um, there'll be an Umbraco sort of architect's guide of how to build um, CMS systems. That'd be really exciting. And then the end part of the year, if I can smash that Umbraco book out using sort of a similar format, then I'll hopefully do one about um, like deploying code releases. Over the years, I always seem to be the sort of, I'd like to say the person, but really just, you know, the, the dog's body who gets sort of shunted into doing like releases or fixing like broken pipelines or setting up servers. I don't know how, but I end up doing it. But over that course of, um, you know, always doing releases, in my life I've probably done something like a thousand prod releases and these have been things for like stockbrokers, they've been for like companies that make millions of pounds per day. So in that process, I've obviously learned a lot and there's definitely some techniques. So hopefully by the end of the year, there'll be a bit of a book around, you know, how people can manage and deploy their code. Aside from that, I've got some new features that I want to implement on the website. Um, one of the things I said, because I went from Umbraco, um, from WordPress even into Umbraco, you may notice some of the tutorials on the website look a bit funky, some of the imaging um, or the alignments off. And because there's so many uh, sort of tutorials now on the website, there's over a thousand, um, that's like just really hard to content manage now. So one of the plans is, is probably hopefully to port everything from HTML into Markdown. And as soon as I get into Markdown, I think I just lose a lot of the formatting issues. So hopefully the um, text of them will be easier for everyone to read. The other thing that I'd really like to do is um, just add in like a few more sales banners um, and then just help people find um, what they need to find on the site a little bit better. And then obviously I need to sort of try and get a bit of a better sales funnel. If I'm going freelance full time, I'm gonna have to figure out a way of um, trying to find new work. And that might be through people per hour, might be me just banging on people's door. Potentially it might even just me be emailing people on LinkedIn, but that's one of the things that I'm sort of quite excited and want to do. So anyway, that's been a bit of update of my year, um, what I'm thinking about where I am at the moment and where I'm hoping to go. Hopefully that anyone's watching this finds um, the content useful. I do get like a load of feedback, a load of people who put, purchased the book who said that they've, um, I've helped them over the years. They keep coming back to my tutorials, maybe not through choice, but like because uh, of my uh, SEO strategy, I sort of blanketed uh, <laughs> and hit a few keywords. So a lot of the times people say that when they search for Umbraco or FE server, they sort of tend to find me quite quickly. There's now getting more and more JavaScript and React sort of tutorials on the website, so I'm hoping that to grow. Uh, the good news as well that I didn't actually say is the uh, my unique visitors per month sort of it steadily grows. At the moment, I think it's on about 23, 24,000 people a month. 
I think I've just hit uh, over 2 million page views a few months ago, which was also amazing. I mean, for me, I'm someone who was born with spelling difficulties. If you come across the site, you might sort of notice a few typos here and there. Um, but for me, it's quite amazing that uh, I've managed to write a load of content and really like 2 million people have read like the nonsense that I write. And obviously I don't go out to steal the content, so it's quite amazing sometimes that I can generate and think about the amount of content and the amount of ideas to write tutorials and videos. So um, yeah, anyone who's been following me for ages, I really appreciate it. You're legends. Um, if you've got your own project, your own side hustles, if you just want to share what you are thinking about doing this year or what went well for you, if you know any decent uh, Umbraco tutorials or Umbraco plugins or just you know some exciting projects you want to get involved in, uh, just let me know because honestly I'm quite interested. If you're working on an open source project as well, I would actually be quite uh, interested in helping out and contributing to um, so run like a quite a big project. So again, there's potentially some chances for collaboration. Anyway, if you want some uh, Umbraco knowledge, head over to my website, it's johndjones.com. Otherwise, continue to be epic. Oh yeah, by the way, if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button, I'll call you a legend. It'll be the easiest thing you can do today to be called a legend, so hit that subscribe button. Be a legend. Anyway, until next time, catch you later.